Unlike most simulators, Automobilista 2 allows you to drastically change the game's force feedback by using a custom force feedback file that you place in the documents folder of Automobilista 2. In this video, I'm going to be using one of those such custom force feedback files to demonstrate how massively this can transform the experience of driving Automobilista 2. Now, before we get driving, it is worth saying that I actually think the default force feedback in Automobilista 2 is perfectly fine. Uh, you might as well just use that. You don't need to use custom stuff if you just want to have a good time. And in fact, Automobilista 2's default force feedback with a well set up wheel gives you more information than uh, many other simulators on the market and is certainly as good as anything else on the market. But with that said, this custom force feedback file that I'm going to talk about now uh you have to try it because it's absolutely mental welcome back to the gaming muscle youtube channel and uh, a huge thank you to everybody that subscribed recently follow us on twitch follow us on twitter and of course everyone that supported us um with by becoming channel members and donations and all that stuff and using our affiliate links uh as always i really really do appreciate it um Thanks for allowing me to power my, <laughs> my setup here. So, we've got the uh, custom file in AMS2 um, in the folder. You just put you just put the custom force feedback, replace the default one uh, that's in the game, uh, that's in the file, in the document file. Put the custom force feedback file in there, load into the game, and uh, what you do is you go to options, controls, force feedback, and uh, you just select custom. By default, it'll be on default you've got uh, a default plus which i don't like uh, but go to the reason forms it will explain the differences um and custom once you've done that this will now load the custom file uh that's in the in that documents folder and we can now enjoy uh lunatic <laughs> lunatic but surprisingly good force feedback uh, let's get to the track here um one way to also check that your custom force feedback file is working is if you go through the HUD in the game uh, you can see the name of the custom force feedback file down here you can also see if your force feedback's clipping and what's going on there there we go so you go through the HUD so this custom force feedback file that I'm using here is the RFUKTOR I'm not going to say it properly because I don't want to get this video banned <laughs> 5.0.1 by Karsten with Shadok and Panos and this this is like a uh, I can't remember the name of the guy that's adjusted it. it'll be in the description the file this force feedback file a link to it will be in the description as well um, basically this this original there was an original uh, custom force feedback that got really popular people fiddle with it and do whatever they want to do to make it good or to make it how they like it and then they get shared on the Automobilista 2 forum this is a custom version of a custom file it, it just keeps going and it's madness Anyway, so this custom force feedback um, completely and utterly transforms the, the force feedback of AMS2. Um, and the way it does it, or the way that it really changes things, is that the way they've set it up, um, it effectively gives you much more of a, uh, a feel for for rear traction loss so you end up with force feedback that's very similar to if you ever used irffb and you turn the uh, seat of the pants setting on really high um it conveys that rear traction loss very aggressively uh through your force feedback with the wheel basically automatically counter steering um the the back rotation and also loading up really quite detailed in, in relation to how much the car wants to rotate um, this this file also does have uh, quite amplified track bumps and curbing in fact probably a bit overdone if you've got a DD wheel um, but the main thing is and the main thing that's really interesting is by this file being so aggressively set up in the sense of uh, it conveying uh, that seat of the pants feel it really makes Automobilista 2 far, far less of a chore to drive. Uh, because if you're using the default force feedback in Automobilista 2, what you'll find is uh, you have to be very, very manually active on the steering to catch the cars um, and to play with the vehicles, which isn't necessarily unrealistic, but 
in my opinion, Automobilista 2 is probably one of the slidiest <laughs> simulators out there. Um, so when you're trying to drive quickly, it can uh, it can be a bit of a chore to then actually catch the car or even avoid yourself from going into what are quite uh, quite large slides. But with this custom force feedback, uh, basically, you can much better drive the car commentators curse <laughs> you can much better drive the car on the pedals uh, without really having to think about the steering wheel now i know we're obviously the skeptical ones of you out there and uh, people that understand how real cars self-align and other simulators self-align uh, in, in any car in any sim you do expect the steering to self-align and uh, the force feedback to pull the wheel back to basically put the car in the state of uh, least resistance which allows you to then very easily drive and in fact there's plenty of drift videos out there of people doing no-handed drifts where they just use the brake and the accelerator and timing to control the the rear of the car and get the car um, and which will then rotate the steering wheel as it corrects and self aligns and you can then literally drift and drive a car with, with no steering wheel you can do that in Assetto Corsa actually and I think Assetto Corsa probably has the most realistic tyre model and uh, force feedback of all the sims or the most natural especially when it comes to drifting and uh, that self-aligning and detail through the steering but this is different to that basic self-aligning with with this force feedback um, and it's absolutely mental <laughs> it's absolutely mental um, where this is different from what I would probably call correct force feedback and uh, more realistic force feedback is that it's kind of back to front in that when you uh, initially turn there really isn't much feel for that uh, front end tyre resistance and uh, turning in feel uh, you know that when you initially turn in that sort of resistance there really isn't much there it's actually super super light uh, on that turning um, but bizarrely with AMS2 that actually makes it easier to be more precise with your with your input and even though it's super light and you can't really feel how much grip the fronts have um, it doesn't really seem to matter that much because you you turn in with AMS2 and you can sort of use the feel of the rear wanting to come out as a reference point for if you're getting over the limit of the front. Honestly, this custom force feedback file literally feels back to front <laughs> in, in the information it's putting through the wheel and what's going on. It honestly feels wrong. But you can interpret the information that the force feedback is giving to you and it allows you to drive AMS2 uh, for me it allows you to drive AMS2 much more precisely and it removes the chore as I say in AMS2 of having to deal with the rear of the cars uh, which which I, I, I find it an irritation with AMS2 <laughs> so there's not it's really hard to talk about force feedback and force feedback files and, and you know what feels like what and how to convey that through words which is the difficulty of talking about force feedback in general or anything that moves but you really 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 have to give this force feedback file a go if you play Automobilista 2 and I have to say I really think that it's actually a fantastic thing that AMS2 and uh, Project Cars 2 which obviously AMS2 uses the Madness engine exposes the force feedback and how you can change the force feedback exposes that to players uh, especially that it's done in a text file um, I just wish every driving simulator allowed communities to mess around with force feedback um, as much as AMS2 allows you to do it and by putting it in a text file it means that you sort of user that doesn't really know what they're doing or doesn't care or doesn't want to fiddle with it they can just use the default games force feedback which is perfectly fine and not be affected by it and not be confused by it but people that want to tinker and uh, mess around with force feedback they can do that and then they can share the files and then people can see what they like and dislike and in the case of this file 
um, I think it's madness. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it correct force feedback. Uh, I think it could be even better than what it is now as well, even in an incorrect sense. But um, it's actually it's really fun to just play around with. And for me, this, despite being wrong, um, this force feedback file is... Uh, we've done like five or six races with it last night. We did a 12-hour live stream the other day. Um, this force feedback file makes AMS2 more fun more fun to drive and at the end of the day what we're playing driving sims for if it isn't just to have fun and if you bought a direct drive wheel um you know it's nice to actually play with that equipment and get and, and try different things with it and get the most out of it now it's definitely worth saying um one thing worth noting and one of our <laughs> viewers on the channel almost broke their wrists with this force feedback uh, file um, the uh, curbing bumps and uh, track bumps are a little bit overdone on it so if you turn your force feedback back up to full force and you might not feel much whilst you're driving normally but then if you hit a curb in a certain way you might then find that your wrists are removed from your wheel uh, from your hand <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind maybe when you're messing around with the file uh, put it on a low setting at first in terms of your DD wheel strength and then uh, and then drive over some curbs <laughs> or maybe uh, put a bit of dampener on or, you know give it a go on some lower settings before you break your wrists so that's worth saying and i'd also say i think the uh the actual bumps that's in this file and the track texture that comes through this file is a little bit overdone um though what a lot of people will find is that uh bumps and track texture feeling are uh, something that uh, really help give a sense of the car being connected to a road surface um, as as an illusionary force when you can feel like the sort of suspension rattling a bit and uh, you, you feel the the it, the tires vibrating a little bit from the track surface especially if you feel that more when the car's scrubbing even before you're massively uh, understeering um, and and uh, understeering in a way that would cause real world vibrations through the through the steering if you feel uh, that sort of vibration and rumble more when you're going through a general corner it really does help make the car feel uh, more connected to the road surface so that's quite a good thing with with ams2 especially where i think the front of the cars tend to be quite door of the explorer i wouldn't say that's the case with gt3 cars or the gte cars um, and the new f3 cars not too bad but there's definitely a lot of cars in AMS2 where the, the the front really, to me, seems quite disconnected from the road. And at least with having this rumbly force feedback, um, that can in some ways help with that. But the crucial thing, and the main thing, is this self-aligning type force for the rear rotating and the way you can then use that uh, to inform your driving and uh, literally drive from the force feedback rather than driving from visuals so as i get on the throttle here i can feel the force feedback load up a bit because the back wants to step out more it maybe was stepping out a tiny bit you modulate the throttle all smooth no problem you can keep things nice and tame and then avoid yourself getting into super mega monster fishtail out of control slides which are very <laughs> easy to get into in ams2 though controllable in ams2 uh, but uh you really want to be able to actually uh, have a feel for those for those slides i feel um the custom force feedback file as well this specific one also makes uh, cars like the gt1 cars a lot more pleasurable in my opinion to drive it makes all the cars more pleasurable to drive in an abstract sense um but if you're struggling even if you had a dd will and you were struggling to sort of deal with the uh nature of the oversteering ams2 then you might find this really uh, helps uh, connect the sliding of the vehicles with the force feedback more. And I, I have to say, I am actually quite a fan of GT1 cars in general. I think they're they're a really fun car to drive. I'm, I'm, I don't get why esports <laughs> don't uh, why why with esports they're always driving boring cars. We, we, esports should be uh, driven with uh, awesome vehicles. GT1, Maserati, MC12s. Uh, I don't know, H-Pattern, 1970s Formula cars. 
But by having that dynamic range of forces, even incorrect, it, for me, that makes it easier to drive the cars, but it also makes a sim much more immersive. Now, separate to this force feedback file and separate to this sort of the conversation specific to AMS2, uh, you might not have noticed I'm using a uh, uh, an AccuForce wheel here. Um, and one of the nice things with an AccuForce wheel is it has completely custom force feedback options, uh, allowing you to generate separate force feedback from telemetry. Now, I've turned all that off and I'm literally just using the game's force feedback for the purpose of this because most people don't have that option. But um, again, it, having the freedom to tweak the force feedback and set things up with other sims, uh, I think it's only a good thing. And I, and I just wish that either more sims do what AMS 2's done by having an editable text file for people to be able to set things up however they want, rightly, wrongly, stupidly, correct, incorrect, whatever. I, w I think that should be the default for all sims. And I also think that hardware manufacturers, Simucube, AccuForce, they already do AccuForce, Simucube, Fanatec, SimMagic, all, all these companies, they need to look at the Sim Commander software that the AccuForce uses um, and do something similar to that. Or maybe uh, Sim Commander could support other wheels. I know back in 2013, Bernie Villers actually suggested that with OSWs and it didn't happen. But uh, I think that would be a much better world for everyone that's a force feedback uh, obsessed lunatic, <laughs> such as myself. We're saying, actually, I've got a force feedback joystick on this sim rig. You can't see it. That allows you to, uh, that takes the uh, flight simulator's telemetry and allows you to completely customize the force feedback. So it's kind of weird that a force feedback joystick gives you options that most force feedback wheels don't give you. Um, but there you go. <laughs> The world of force feedback is very strange. Look at that, going around that corner there. <laughs> nice thing is as well is when you the uh, from this force feedback file is the mid corner load feel, especially with these GT1 cars, you can sort of feel uh, that lateral traction mid corner to know how much to modulate the throttle and how much to modulate the brake uh, and how that's likely to affect the vehicle. Um, and it makes it makes the slides a lot more clear and obvious as to where it's your fault where you're going wrong or what why what's happening is happening and for what reasons you can feel it through the force feedback which uh i enjoy, i just find that way more pleasurable because I'm, I'm not an alien sim racer i'm never going to be super fast but uh having force feedback that describes what the car is doing to me is very analogous to any time i've driven real world cars or been in real world cars uh the the experience of the g loading and what you feel through a steering wheel and uh, that motion and movement, that's what makes a real car, driving a real car, driving a real car. So anything that uh, can emulate that, either literally or in an abstract sense, I, I find brings you closer to the experience of real world driving. But uh, there you go, really. I mean, uh, there's not much more to say. Let me do a ludicrous slide. <laughs> the degree to which this... It's, it's very hard to talk and drive whilst doing this and actually induce bad driving. But the degree... to which the force feedback corrects... <laughs> um, also, actually, one of the nice things is it doesn't oscillate. It doesn't overshoot with this file. While still having quite snappy uh, correction. It's often a problem if you if you have a seat of the pants effect turned up with iRacing, with iFFB, for example, you'll often get a lot of overshoot um, unless you put a lot of dampening on, but then that dampening uh, causes uh, delay and uh, less precision. So look at this. I'm not I'm not doing that correction. That was all from the <laughs> force feedback correcting my crazy amount of throttle on that corner. Let's try and drift uh, this corner a bit. Here we go. <laughs> and I messed it up. <laughs> you know, probably not meant to uh, drift GT1 cars, but why not? It's a simulator. Oh, there's more of a power slide than a drift, and too much. So, you, you know, you're still you're going to go over the limit. It's still too much. Uh, you can still go too much, too far. That's a terrible demonstration. Force feedback talk videos. <laughs> All I can say is. 
get this file. I'll put a link to the description there. Get it. Give it a go for yourself. Um, it might be a thing that really uh, gets you into AMS2 and makes you enjoy it more from previously. Uh, also, definitely try out other people's files. Um, and as I say, remember that the default in-game force feedback is actually perfectly fine. Much more detailed, uh, regardless of if you like handling the vehicles and stuff, much more detailed than sims like ACC. Uh, but not as good as AC1. Uh, but you know, so the default's fine. But uh, <laughs> there you go, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, lunatic, crazy lunatic driving a car badly saying to try out force feedback. Uh, if you did, make sure you click that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Have a cup of tea. And I'll catch you in the next live stream we do. We'll do racing with subscribers again. And I'm, I'm going to drive more of these GT1 cars with people because I think they, they produce very fun racing. Till the next one, take care. Goodbye, guys.